If you look at the volume picture, it's still very consistent with being a bear market rally. If you look at sort of the proportion of buyers we see on up days to sellers you see on down days, it's way still in favor of the sellers saying that momentum from a volume perspective is still behind the downtrend. Sentiment measures, which were very negative, have kind of unwound to neutral. So I think for us, our view going into here is this is where we should be looking for this bear market rally to end and for the risk to start to turn lower again. I think, as you say, the concern and maybe sort of the risk we're watching against that is when we look at positioning, um, which still shows, if you look at, say, the CFTC data for the S&P, um, quite a large net short. Um, so I think if we do break some resistance levels, there is a clear risk we could see that more of a short squeeze. But I think that's more one of the limited ones on, on the negative side. So I think we're going in here thinking this is where we should be looking for this rally to fail and for the risk to start to turn lower again. We're at the end of the month, so inevitably you expect there to be a little bit of window dressing, particularly if uh, people have had a difficult year, they'd like to book a bit of profit perhaps and shut up the books early for, for year end here. But if you put a seasonal overlay on what you're saying about the S&P, is there limited chance then that we see any kind of end of year bounce? It's, it's an interesting dynamic because seasonally you would have to say yes there would be that chance and the positioning data does point to that but I think it's, it's a very sort of quite simple measure but the 200 day average you know, for, is, is a very classic sort of measure and if you are in a bear market it's very you know, unusual to get above the 200-day average. It's quite unusual that you would push through there. If you do, I think you do have to start to question that. So you've got to balance, I think, where we are in terms of the weight of the actual technical resistance levels we're at combined with that seasonal picture. I think it's a very unusual year as well to put that weight on seasonals. I think this year is probably not the right thing. If you look at some of the correlations we've seen this year, it's more, way more of an unusual year. So I think we put that to one side for now. We think those correlations will probably start to kick back in next year. Um, and that's certainly a theme that we're looking for from our side and with our sort of broader house view as well from our 2023 outlook. But we're putting those more of a lesser impact at the moment. And more. So if we go down, David, um, where are we going down to on the S&P? So just purely in terms of this week, I think what, if you are negative, what you want to probably start to see is the market come back below 3,900. And I think that takes the pressure off the 200 day and probably suggests you put a near term top in place. Our view is we'll come back to sort of 3,700, 3,750, that type of area. I think if you're genuinely in a market where you're going back to the lows and lower, that 3,700 area is, is the key, the, really the key support level. Um, but our view is we don't see why we can't go back to 3,500 and, and potentially lower. The, if this is genuinely just been a correction in a broader downtrend. When does a bear market rally become a real rally? I, we have to take out some certain lows, do we? I mean, I, I'm just thinking longer term. I've seen a lot of 3,000, 3,250s on the S&P as well. What levels do we have to take out on the downside for it to become a fairly unambiguous signal that the bear market's over? Um, do you mean levels on the upside to suggest the bear market? I mean levels on the downside. Um, I.e., um, where this is the, the bear market rally. Yeah. Oh, I see. Uh, you're, you're saying, is, okay, let's say we don't sustain yeah. a breach above the 200 day moving average and we do go down and we test 3,500. But where are we going to test on the downside or where are we going to get to on the downside? I think 3,200, 3, 3,235 right. is where you see those long term retracement levels okay. and those long term support levels. And that's levels. the level. I'm seeing a lot of the non technical guys, the more strategy side of things, saying, yeah, that's the level. Yeah. 3,000, 3,300. That for us technically has been the levels that we've been looking at earlier this year. This is so this if is, you think that that's the level and they think that's the level, we're not going to get there, are we? There is a consensus <laughs> you know view, I think, is where you're going down the road of, is, is, is that a pure, you know, very much a consensus view. And I, yeah. I think it is. It doesn't mean it can't be right, and it doesn't no, mean sure. it sh we shouldn't look for that. And we have to address the market through the analysis process that we address it through and yeah. um, stick to that. No, um, but I would agree when I look at... You don't like being uh, in the herd, do you? Sometimes it's nice to be the, out the outlier on that side, but it doesn't mean it's not right to be part no, of the herd. Um, ju just let's uh, skip through some of these other ones. Um, you've got oil mm. um, continuing lower. Um, let's get a line from you then on oil, uh, the Treasury market and where we're going on the dollar. So I think oil, it's more a case on oil, we're just steadily taking out supports. It's not the most dynamic downtrend in the world, it's just it's a steady grind lower and we're slowly but surely take out a support level, recover, fade the rally, it takes out again. So I think the overall path for oil is lower. I think where that is important, I think we still think Brent will get to 77 and a half, is it fits in with a narrative of peak in US inflation break evens or inflation break evens in general. And, and our view is inflation break evens will continue to come down. We think there's been a major peak in place. And maybe the downside's not huge, yeah. but they will continue to come down. And where that narrative fits in is with the peak yield story. And actually, yields continue to come down as well.